Hi there, my name is Katinka. I'm the seamstress at the cottage and I'm coming to you from South Africa. It's Friday, so it's my most favorite hashtag. It was started by Jen from Today in Jen's sewing room. And she started it to bring the sewing community together. With this hashtag, we chat about what we've been making, some general life stuff, and just whatever is on our minds. As you can see, it's quite dark. We have rain outside. It's not raining at the moment, but we almost washed away today. And the clouds are causing it to be very dim. So <laughs> I decided to set up in this corner because there's a window from this side that lights up my face. And there's a window from that side that makes it things are not too dark. And then I put the fairy lights behind me just because it's pretty. It's load shedding at the moment, so I was not able to put any lights on. So I thought instead of stepping in my normal corner, I'll just sit here and chat to you today. So what have I been making? I finished my Christmas dress. I also finished this. I spoke about it for a gift in November that I was going to make my friend for Christmas a top in this. So this is a viscose lycra and this is viscose. And so the one is stretchy and the other one is non-stretchy. This was left over from a, pro a dress that I made for a client and it was just strips that went like that. So I sewed them together and that gave me enough for the front. I made like a t-shirt, the batwing t-shirt, but not too, too much, just from there. And then I gave it cuffs in the stretchy material and I gave it a uh, ribbing on, around the neck and the back was also in the stretchy material and she loves it. Again, my normal thing, I didn't take photos. I get so upset when I don't do that, but you'll just have to believe me. <laughs> I also finished a dress. I will put in some footage of work that still needs to be done. And I, in that footage, I speak about it, this green dress I still need to copy. So all of these I need to make smaller. That dress I need to copy. I've cut it out already. This one I need to copy. That one and that one. I need to do them in this white, yellow and red linen. Then I also need to make a jumpsuit out of that one and that one. While I copied it and I made it, the client fetched it and I didn't take photos. <laughs> Another thing that I've done is I had to cut out this pattern, which I did. I had pieces of this linen. It's a beautiful linen. It is really just exquisite. And I had just pieces left over. So the client wanted this pair of pants. She's from Thailand. And apparently everybody wears these over there. It's quite interesting. So it's got like two square parts. That's a square part like that. And then there's one on the other side. Then... It has a piece, a smallest piece, it's that wide, and it goes, this one is cut according to the pants pattern, and then it's got a triangle. But then on that side, it's, and everything is cut straight. There's no, like, because, you know, if I, if I would have worked it out, I would have, because it's on the, kind of like, on the bias here, I would have cut it on the bias, but it just, it's just a straight piece of material. And then on this side, it goes up, and then like that, and then down, and then they just cut out for the crotch. And then you have this wide band, and apparently you fold it over as much as you need, and then this ties around your waist, and then you fold the whole pair of pants over. It is such an interesting pattern. I'm actually going to copy it, draw it off on paper so I have it for future use, because I can see myself wearing these, and I can actually see a few of my friends wearing them as well, and maybe I can sell some in the village. It's a perfect holiday pair of pants. My green dress... I made that for Christmas. I spoke about it in my last video for the year. And this is my first one for 2023. I didn't even say anything about that. Oh my gosh, my mind is not with us today. But anyway, this is my first one for 2023. And so if you go back to my last Friday shows for 2022, I speak about this skirt that I was turning into a dress that was... Uh, it's raining again. Oh, I love rain. I speak about this raw silk skirt that I wore for my brother's wedding 10 years ago. So I took that skirt and I turned it into a dress for Christmas Day. I'll put in some footage now about that. I think it's a little off on that side. Oh. But then I can do 
The hens had finished my dress. It feels so strange to do this for myself. Usually, when I sit on the floor and cutting them straight, I'm actually doing it for clients. But I think this was a skirt and it's going to be my dress tonight. that I've done this month, this week so far. I've been back at work and I, I wasn't really away from work but we just had a lot of public holidays in between. So this, this week was also, it only started on Tuesday because Monday we had a public holiday. It was like everybody needed everything when I got back. So it's been quite a busy week and I don't mind but it's just been busy. And then I have also been knitting. So like I said in my last video, I want to finish these socks. So I sat down and this one is still where I left it off the last time. And I took them off the cabled needles because the magic loop just was hurting my hands. And I just took my DPNs and I sat down and I'm busy with this one. I have six more rows on it and then I do the ribbing and then this one will be done and then I'll go over to this one. And what happened since the last time we chatted, I finally was able to memorize the pattern. So now I can just sit and knit and it's been so much fun. Where before I was complaining about it because literally every time I finished the row, I can actually show you, I would have to draw a line through because I would forget. And I got to a place where it was just so tedious that I'd stop and I would do two rows and then not continue. But now I'm really enjoying it and I can see myself finishing these socks before the next Friday shows. Let's hold thumbs. <laughs> a bit of a life update. My friends are coming. So these friends, um, when I was much younger, I was living in a cottage in people's backyard and they had three daughters. And the wedding dress that I showed you how I made this wedding dress was one of the daughters. So one of them are coming with her family and they're coming to visit me for a few days. Hi, Pinky. They're coming to visit me for a few days and I'm looking forward to spending time with her and her husband and her three kids. She's got two little girls, the oldest one is a girl and then there's the little boy, he's the baby who's a year and a bit. So I'm really looking forward. They're actually coming in about two hours. So I need to actually get going because I need to still tidy up their rooms. <laughs> but I'm very excited. Oh, another life update. This one decided to get, get um, we call it billery, so they get it from ticks. On Saturday, I thought I was going to lose her. Basically, what happens? Okay, basically, what happens is it's a, a parasite that attacks the red blood cells and then bursts them, and they can bleed to death well, internally within a day or two. You get different ones. It's spread by ticks. Um, and you get different types of, of, of this specific disease, but um, she had a very aggressive one. So luckily, I keep a very close eye on my animals because I, have, I live in a felt and there's so many ticks around. And that morning she was a bit lethargic and I thought something is off, but I'll keep an eye on her. And that was by 8 or 7 o'clock, I think. And by 11 o'clock, she was just lying outside in the sun, which is totally not her nature. And I went and I picked her up and she growled. So, no, don't do that. So she growled at me and she's never done that. So I realized this cat's really sick. But then I was scared because we have a major rabies outbreak in this area. And she is inoculated, but I didn't know if she could still, apparently you can still, sometimes they still get the rabies, even if they're inoculated. So it was quite scary and it was the 31st and I had to find a vet that was open. And so I finally found a vet and it was a girl I knew and this girl was really lovely and she did the test. It's a very quick one. They literally take a blood smear 
and then they just put it on the microscope and they can immediately see what type it is. And she came back and she said the one that she's got, it was extremely aggressive. If I left it until Tuesday, which I wanted to do when it was not a public holiday because the call-out fee is three times what a normal fee would be, um, she would have been dead because she literally would have bled to death from, from internally. So I was so thankful that I listened to my gut. And then what she, this girl did is she taught me how to inject her. So she gave me injections because I live quite far from town. It's about half an hour to an hour's drive. And she taught me how to inject her so I don't have to take her into town because that's also stressful for her. And she also gave me antibiotics. So the injection is something that kills the uh, parasite, but the parasite carries a virus and that's no, a bacterial infection. And that's what the antibiotics is for. So for 14 days, I need to get a tablet down her throat. And we're only on day, let me think, we're on day four today. <laughs> so she has scratched my finger there. And she has scratched my finger there. And every day I'm just praying that she doesn't <laughs> scratch me to pieces because she's not good. This one I can actually put a pull down his throat. It's not a problem. But, oh my gosh, she's feisty. But she was so sick that I actually was able for the first two days to just put stuff down her throat and she wouldn't even fight me. So I'm very thankful. And then Licious, Malish, the dog, she was shaking her ear and I think she had like an ear infection or maybe some ear mites. So I clean, cl kept on cleaning the ear with olive oil and checking it. But it wasn't red. And then suddenly the ears swell up. And now she's got a hematoma in her ear. So it's basically a blood vessel that bursts. So I'm just keeping an eye on it and icing it. But um, yeah, the, the vets can't really do much about it. They cut it open, but it might come back. So I'm just watching it. It's been quite an eventful week. But I'm thankful. And I am so glad that I can spend time with you here. It's always so much fun. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And... Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, I would love it if you subscribe or give a thumbs up or leave a message. And also share it with someone that you know might like it as well. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.